Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Louise. I'm from the UC Santa Cruz Genomics Institute. I'm a software engineer, and I work on DocStore. Uh, so this talk's going to be focusing on the new features that we've implemented into DocStore since our first BOSS presentation in 2017. Uh, there's been a lot of new things, so get excited. So what exactly is DocStore? Um, DocStore is a free and open source platform for sharing scientific tools and workflows. It's a registry of Docker-based resources described using popular workflow languages like CWL, Whittle, and Xflow. Our goals are to increase the portability, interoperability, and reproducibility of research in the sciences. So for portability, we mean workflows should be able to run in any environment that supports Docker, and for interoperability, we follow the GA4GH API standards and support multiple integrations so that people can use their preferred compute and data storage environments. Most importantly, reproducibility. Um, DocStore is a place for developers to share their work so that others can use them. This means um, min minimizing error-prone installation of software tools while maximizing uh, the transparency of what actual methods are being used so that other people can actually bring those in into their own research. So now we're on, we've released our 1.60 release um, and 1.25 was the one presented at BOSC 2017. We'll be having new release at the end of August, early September, um, so look out for that. So we're completely open source. You can check us out at our GitHub. Please submit any issues, even any pull requests or uh, feature requests you'd like to see. We have an open swagger. Um, you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. So what were the motivations for DocStore? Uh, DocStore was created by the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research as a registry of workflows for the Pan Cancer Analysis of Home Genomes Project, aka PCOG. So the PCOG study was a collaboration by the International Cancer Genome Consortium to identify the common patterns of mutation. Numbers-wise, this involved over 5,800 whole genomes from over 2,800 cancer donors, eight different store, uh, storage sites with about um, 300 to 900 terabytes of data and 14 very different compute environments. Um, a lot of this uh, data also had to stay within their environments. And so we had, th the group had to find a way to bring algorithms to the data and, and do research where it was able. So with this scale of complexity, um, DocStore was created to increase the portability of workflows and make sure, making sure those workflows could be reproduced um, and the results could be shared. So as the project wrapped up, they realized this could have a big impact in um, the wider research community and therefore DocStore spun off into its own independent open source project. Uh, through collaboration with the GA4GH, uh, which is the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, DocStore helped draft the Tool Registry Service API standard. So TERS defines a minimal, common, read-only read API for listing and describing tools or workflows located in a given registry so that those entries can be exchanged, indexed, or researched um, or searched by other services. Um, by DocStore being TERS compliant, uh, this places DocStore into the cloud workstream to work with the cloud workstream APIs, which allows for the execution of workflows through WES endpoints, uh, task, execu task execution through test endpoints, and accessing data in the cloud uh, through DERS, which was formerly called DOS. So um, this is the DocStore ecosystem. 
um, within the GA4GH cloud work stream. So containers are used to wrap up the software for people's tools, and those tools are then put into workflows wrapped around a descriptor, which are loaded into DocStore as the Terse API, Terse provider, and through the Terse, Terse West orchestrator, DocStore can communicate with West and Ders endpoints. So these are some of the different implementations of West and Ders endpoints that are currently available, um, and the different execution engines that they run through. So although DocStore is a Terse-based API, um, it goes beyond Terse to add functionality that is specific to DocStore. Um, and I'll be going over what these specific things are in the next following slides. But we also provide a validator for others who want to implement their own Terse um, APIs for their given registries. So before I go over that, though, um, I kind of wanted to go give an overview of what exactly are you registering into DocStore? Uh, what exactly are containers, descriptors, and parameter files? Um, because these are all the types of things that you'll find on DocStore. So a tool is a container with all your package dependencies, your software. Uh, currently, we only support Docker containers, but we're definitely looking into uh, how to support other types of containers in the future. Um, and workflows are made up of multiple tools uh, in their containers, an associated descriptor that also specifies input and output parameters. So for descriptors that we support, we support CWL, Whittle, and Nextflow. Uh, we're also looking into ways to support other descriptor languages. I know that yesterday there was something like 259 different ones that were mentioned. Um, so, but what exactly is a descriptor? A descriptor um, describes which tools or containers are going to be used, uh, what steps are going to be taken in kind of like the pipeline described by this descriptor and when, where the input and output parameters are located, how to alloc and some descriptors provide how to allocate compute environments so that your analysis is actually more efficient um, and can be run um, in the best manner for your type of analysis. So, and descriptors can also support metadata information, and we actually provide uh, syntax and ways to surface that metadata into the DocStore UI. And also, uh, what, what you put into DocStore is a test parameter file, so that users who look at your, your, your workflow or tool can know what act, actually your inputs were um, and where, you, at least if they're public, they can access them as well. And they can use this parameter file to input what inputs they would like to have um, for their own analysis to actually make this a more transparent process that can be used by others. So, DocStore is a registry. Um, it is a searchable and centralized catalog, uh, meaning that it brings together other registries, uh, popular ones like GitHub, Bitbucket, Quay, Docker Hub, so that users can actually use their preferred source control repository for both their containers and their descriptor files. So we actually have external hosting, um, with integration supported by public APIs that we've connected to. So when you create a DocStore account, you have the option to link into these various uh, re registry or repository sites. And our two login methods that we currently support are if you don't create an account directly with DocStore, you can log in with Google or GitHub and also connect your other descript uh, registry accounts for a little more added functionality than you would if you just uh, linked, uh, pointed to a re re registry without, um, without linking your account. 
So ways to register into DocStore, this is just kind of how the UI interface kind of walks you through uh, the options that you have. We have plenty of documentation to uh, give users a walkthrough on how to exactly do this. This is the My Tools interface that if you have your account uh, linked with Quay, for example, your Quay, um, your different Quay red, uh, organizations and repositories will pop up. Same thing with GitHub, your different GitHub organizations and the associated uh, workflows that you have in those um, registries. So on the right, we have the manual registration process where you kind of just point to your external source repo or you can actually create and save your descriptor directly on docstore.org. And for the visually inclined, here's a summary diagram of the many ways you can register your tool or workflow into docstore. I personally like diagrams. Um, they make more sense to me. All these slides are going to be available, so if I'm going a little too fast. So one thing with Quay is you can, Quay, we, we recommend Quay for automated builds. We can actually detect when a new tag is pushed, when you make changes to your um, Docker file, uh, whether it's stored directly on Quay or if you've connected Quay to your um, external repo uh, repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, et cetera. Um, and so we can detect those changes and also display a more version controlled view um, so that when you give a public view to other users, you can say, use this version. Um, this version works on so-and-so platforms, et cetera. So Docker supports, once again, Docker supports containerization of your tools that you, or workflows that you register into Docker. Uh, Docstore, you could, we can only support Docker right now, but definitely planning to add containers like Singularity and UDocker. All languages that we support have visualization, syntax highlighting, and metadata parsing. Uh, currently, not all languages have CLI support, but we do have CLI support for CWL and Whittle in particular. Uh, for metadata parsing, we can parse the authorship, contact information, and um, descriptions. Sometimes those descriptions are even marked down supported so that on DocStore, you can actually give a better view to users who are trying to learn more about what your tool is doing um, and how they can actually use it. Here are the different examples of visualizations that we have for the UI on DocStore.org. On the left, we have the built-in DocStore um, visualization DAG. On the right, we actually have two that we've grabbed from open resource repositories from the community. So thanks for, to VIEW, Common Whittle, and the EPAM Pipeline Builder for making that, those available. And DocStore also supports launch with integrations directly um, to analysis environments for some workflows and tools. We can actually detect if um, your workflows will, will be compatible with the different environments. And so these, these launch with buttons will actually appear if they're um, compatible or not. Otherwise, we have the DocStore CLI, which is more of a handy command line resource for developers to play with their tools and workflows locally before running them in the cloud. The DocStore CLI allows for DIRS file provisioning and some WESC beta support. Locally, you can run your workflows with execution engines like Cromwell or CW Tool. And if you want to try the WESC beta support, that'd be great. If you give us some feedback, that'd be amazing. Um, so with our most recent 1.60 release, we introduced organizations and collections features to make it easier for groups to collaborate and showcase their work. Um, work your, we have meta markdown descriptions for what your organization exactly does, your group exactly does, and people can showcase the collections that, and highlight what, those, what a collection of workflows or a playlist of workflows actually does, and so that you can point people who want to use a group of tools into um, 
what, how to use them, what they do, et cetera. We've introduced numerous usability improvements. Um, we've added labels to all tools and workflows so that people can actually improve searchability if, if it's part of a certain project, et cetera. Uh, like for example, the metadata markdown display. Um, so if you have, if you have markdown or readme, for some languages like CWL and workflow, we can actually show that. And we can actually improve, we've improved the display of versioning so that people can know which execution environments that this workflow has been um, seen to run with and that specifically which versions of those uh, work with certain environments. So for the search interface, we've increased facet searching, um, searching by labels or by descriptor languages so people can find things in a more specific manner. And other usability improvements includes a lot of new documentation for tutorials, um, how, how to create workflows, how to create organizations, et cetera. I want to highlight some community content, like the Geo4JH Dream workflow testbed, um, which actually was a study led by James Eddy to, make, to see what actual, actual workflows were reproducible. Uh, these workflows were stored into DocStore um, and ran in, and into different workflow engines and showed if they actually ran. So yesterday, Brian O'Connor talked about the Commons Alliance. Um, DocStore will serve as the official workflow provider for the Commons Alliance for a, a common infrastructure collaboration and to facilitate combining data and cloud compute platforms. In our next release, we'll be releasing the prototype for apps and services. So, for example, you can run Dockerized genome browsers, Jupyter notebooks, and reference data, provisor, reference data providers. Um, and added a playground for GitHub apps and automatic syncing updates. Uh, you can see this all in our change log. And for future work, definitely the signing of entries on Docker Store to improve security and, this, and the addition of additional containerization support, workflow languages, services, apps, and test bed expansion so that we can show more what, what things work. And here are the thank yous of our team and the acknowledge acknowledgements for our funding partners. Thank you.